Hello, this is our report on the TLC MS for Seth and Mass Spec. Um, I'm Julia Crandall. That's CJ Coughlin and Caitlin Burkhart is filming. Hi. So <laughs> we're going to start by letting CJ go over the components of the instrument. Hello. Come close. This is our TLC MS. This is our solvent of acetic acid in methanol. This is where we can do our TLC plates if we wanted to. This is our pump. This is our, we control the pump and our prime wheel. This is 0.2 milliliters per minute. This pump sends solvent up here the reodine valve, which will get sent into our APCI probe injector, which ionizes the solution into our compact MS, and then we get a readout on our computer. All right, so in order to start the instrument, you pull up manual run. Now, first this has to be selected. That is what turns on the instrument, but this has already been selected by CJ earlier. You hit start acquisition. Here, you choose where your data is going to be saved, who you're, you are, what the sample is, and then have a sample ID. So for this, we're going to be running caffeine. We'll just call this four, since we've already run some other samples. So today is the 27th, let's change that there. And then everything else should be fine. You just hit OK. So what pulls up is we have the live feed of the mass spec. So currently, you can see the time is getting longer here. And this is the signal that we have. Since there's nothing in there, this will become the baseline once we do inject something. And then over here is our mass spectrometer data which will tell us what is in each peak at each time. Okay, so for an example, I'm going to be running um, this solution of caffeine, 100 parts per million of caffeine in methanol. Um, so this is the syringe that we use to um, load the sample. It is a 10 microliter syringe. And first, you this is um, ethanol I poured into a simulation vial, and to clean the syringe, both before samples and in between, you just draw up some ethanol, and then dispense it into a waste. And you would do that three times. I already did that before the video started, though. So now that it is clean, I'm going to draw up about five microliters of the caffeine. making sure there's no bubble in the syringe. Alright, so, now that I have the caffeine, you go over here to the radine valve, and you make sure it is in the load position, which is all the way to the right. And then you insert the needle into this, and you inject and then once you have injected it into the valve you switch this to the inject position and then if you look you should be able to see a spike which represents the caffeine going through the MS. So this is the caffeine that we just ran. We paused it, so you can see this says resume run, this is stop acquisition. So looking at this peak, this is what we want to look at. So what we do is we hit the button data express. So once we do that, it's going to pull this up, which for sake of convenience, we're going to move this over here. So here, this is the full chromatogram. So this is the negative, this is the positive. You can tell because it says APCI negative, APCI positive. So 
since this is caffeine, we really don't care about negative. So we're just going to X out of what says negative. So this leaves the positive chromatogram and then the positive mass spec. So first we want to make a baseline so that we can subtract any noise. To do that, we click the background button and then you can't drag above the axis because it will zoom in. So instead you drag below the axis and you want to ideally take a spot right before your peak. So there's our baseline. And then now all we have to do is select the peak in the same way. So down here, we see what's in the peak. The main thing that we see is, of course, caffeine, which is 194 plus one for the positive mass spec. When you are ready to look at the data and maybe put it into a document, you can hit the print button, which you can then choose, okay, which do you want to do? Do you want to do your selected tab? Do you want to do the chromatogram or the spectrum? Do you want to do both? Um, and then do you want it all on the page? So we're going to put on the math spectra and then we're going to just print it on one page. So when it pulls up, you can see this is the general printing thing. We're going to just print a PDF, make it easy. We're not going to bother printing it out actually. So once we do that, So we're going to label this two, since we already have one. Save. And then it should be saved. We just need to open it. Here it is. And here's our spectra. Okay, so for this experiment, we first ran three standards. We did caffeine theobromine and theophylline um, and as you can see theobromine and theophylline at the same molecular weight because they're isomers you can see that the theobromine has the methyl group on this nitrogen while theophylline has it on this one but they still have the same molecular weight so when you look at their spectra on the mass spec you'll see that they both have their major peak at 181, which is their molecular weight plus one, because this is the positive ion. Um, and this one is theobromine, and this is theophylline. So if you were looking at a sample that had both of these in it, you would have a hard time figuring out which is which. Um, so if you wanted to figure out which compound was which, you would have to use another instrument, such as an NMR. So these were the standards we ran. And this is because the overall purpose of the uh, experiment is to find out who ate the chocolate, which is finding chocolate residue on someone's hand. Um, we'll show how we run that sample in a little bit. But the reason why we ran these standards in particular is um, because the chocolate we're using is a caffeine chocolate and it has both caffeine and theobromine is one of the main compounds found in chocolate, so we can use that to compare to the unknown sample that may or may not have chocolate in it. Hello, come closer. Today we have mint chocolate and caffeine chocolate. We're going to do a sample of the caffeine chocolate take, by taking this probe injector and scratching it on some of the caffeine chocolate. Wipe some of that off very carefully. Okay. Take this plug out, put the injector all the way in. And we get a readout, successful readout. So now we're going to get some of this chocolate residue onto my thumb and see if the instrument can detect the chocolate residue left on my finger. So here we have the data that we just ran from the chocolates. 
the first peak is the caffeine chocolate and then the second peak is the mint chocolate. So we're going to start by doing what we did before, take the background and then we're going to focus on this part of the peak since the rest of it doesn't really matter. You can see down here there's a lot of other junk in this chocolate so we're going to focus specifically on this region where you can see here's the theobromine at 181 and here's the caffeine at 195. Now we're going to do the same thing with the mint chocolate. Take the baseline, find the peak, and you can see here there's something else going on with the 183, but 181 is still in there, so we do have theobromine. But there's no 195, so there's no mint or there's no caffeine in the mint chocolate, which is good because there shouldn't be. Okay, and that is it for our TLC experiment, TLC MS. And just when you are finished up, make sure you put the plug back in where the probe goes. And to turn off the pump, you just come over here and hit this, and you'll see the uh, green light next to the run go off. And finally, you will just want to make sure that you have turned off the nitrogen gas. And that is it. Thanks for watching.